Hey, welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're in Exodus chapter 17, and today we're at verses 8 to 13, Amalek. Let's take a look. Let's read it out. Then Amalek came and fought against Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, choose men for us and go out, fight against Amalek. Tomorrow I will station myself on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. Joshua did as Moses told him and fought against Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. So it came about when Moses held his hand up that Israel prevailed, and when he lit his hand down, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. Then they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, and Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other. Thus his hands were steady until the sunset. So Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword." Now, I'm sure you've heard this passage uh, used before, and people read it and said, this is what we need to do is hold up the hands of our leaders. We need to give them prayer support and support our leaders. And that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. We should be praying for our leaders. Let me tell you, those of us who are leaders need your prayers. We are in a desperate need of your prayers. Now, look at the text, however, carefully. How much praying do you see going on here? Now, I'm not saying Moses didn't pray or, or the others, but honestly here, just strictly looking at the text, what's actually in the text, it doesn't say there was any praying going on here. Now, I, suspect, I believe they were praying, but the text doesn't say that. The text says that when Moses held up his hands and he had the staff, you know, that the, his people prevailed, and when his hands, when he got tired and he put his hands down, that his people didn't prevail. And then they held up his hands. So uh, certainly symbolically it works, but honestly with the text, it doesn't mention that. Um, so there's some details here we can't be absolutely certain of, but I certainly know that uh, they supported their leader and they helped him hold his hands up. And so we want to hold the hands of our leaders up. That is true. Uh, should we pray for our leaders? Yes, that's true. Do our leaders need our prayers? Yes, that's true. Uh, in, but just strictly looking at the text, uh, when the hand was up and the staff was up, they prevailed, and then opposite the other way. Now, think about this also. This is the first fight that Israel has. This is the Hebrews, as they're leaving Egypt, they're out into the desert now. And remember, at the Red Sea, God fought for them. They didn't really have to do anything uh, except be faithful and cross. But here, they're just attacked by Amalek in the desert. So they're attacked out of the blue, and they, they are prevail. They're victorious. So God wanted them to win, and uh, the leaders stood up there, and they saw the leaders, they saw the leaders, and they prevailed. So the picture here is an interesting one. Uh, Amalek is defeated straight up. But remember, these are not people that are ready for big military things. So again, this is a divine intervention. Uh, God intervenes so that his people prevail. God did not bring them in again, as we said before, into the desert just so they'd be wiped out by Amalek. Of course not. So, uh, and yet there's some actual fighting going on here. I guess where I want to go with this is you have a leader who's being faithful to God and you have a people who are being faithful to God. Okay. So a lot of times we may feel like, you know, uh, we're being faithful, but some of our leaders are not being faithful or it might be vice versa. Some of the leaders may be faithful, but the people are ready to, you know, stone the leaders. So here you have them working together, right? The people are actually out fighting just as they were out gathering their manna. And now they're sent out to fight and the soldiers go out, the, the guys, and they're fighting with Amalek. And you have the leader who's up there in plain sight, you know, holding up his staff. And he's definitely, and the other leaders are supporting him. So you have the, the, the primary leader, human leader. You have his supporting uh, team. They're all there. They're all on one spot. This is unity. This is going on that line. And sometimes today in our churches, what do we have? Sometimes we have a very wide divergence of opinion. Some people support this thing. Some people are against this thing. And there's, there's all different ideas that just come flooding into the church. And then there's a bunch of people that are like little baby birds. And they say, oh, look at this new idea. I guess we need to swallow that here. Let me catch the worm in my mouth. And they catch it. And so... Uh, that's kind of a that's kind of a problem. There's much less unity and coherent uh, theology, understanding of God held in common among leadership. What you have is a lot of times you had administrative people, 
and they're all over the board. They have totally different theology. They have pluralistic theology. And within one uh, religious group, you have a wide variety of different, to absolutely, you know, mutually exclusive viewpoints that are held by different people. Here we have the three, Moses, Aaron, and Hur, and they're on the same page. The leaders are together on the same page and God and the people are there soldiering away and, the, and God's people win. Today in our churches, sometimes we don't have the leaders on the same page, they're scattered. And then the people might not be in the same place or the people are just as divided up and scattered up too. And there we have kind of a problem today. Uh, we don't have the kind of unity, the, co the kind of coherent together spirit that this is lacking and sometimes in our churches today and it's hurting us. We are not able to prevail against Amalek. We're not going to prevail against Amalek when we are full of division and different candy-coated ideologies that are not biblical. So today, a warning for us. Let's have leaders that are faithful. Let's have leaders supporting the leaders that are faithful. Let's have the people uh, relatively united. Let's go to the Word of God and find there the teachings that God has and the practice that God has for his people. All right, God bless you. Tomorrow we'll finish, finish, we'll finish. Tomorrow we'll see what happens with Amalek. See you later.